Anyway, Dave Zasloff, <laughs> Dave Zasloff, who is the president of Warner Brothers, um, said that they that their uh, properties, Harry Potter, DC, and Lord of the Rings are underused. Yeah, that was a contract. Hey, I am back. Um, what? I mean, not to you being back. I'm glad you're back. But what? Uh, he okay. Let's let's be real. He doesn't think about these things like a normal person. He thinks about them like an evil CEO. True. So ah. If they're not making you to... money, they're being underused. Correct. That's exactly. Mm-hmm. And which maybe he's not wrong with that idea about if you're not making a lot of money, you're being underused because like DC stuff has not been working. We can't argue. We can argue that, right? It has. Yeah. I would say it's being used too much, right? Especially for rebooting four films in less than a year that all underperform is not a good thing. No. Well, and Harry Potter hasn't done very well either. I mean, yeah, like, that's not really but, Harry. From oh, this, from my wife, who's a Harry Potter fan, Fantastic Beasts is not Harry Potter. True, very true. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lord of the Rings, um, Amazon was How? using it just fine, which I'm sure might get their goat. Wait a minute, Wait, but did was that a good series though? What was the name uh, of the series? Don liked it. Uh, the Rings of Power. It Remember was a, Don? Yeah, it was a pre- Don and Ray were arguing over whether or not it was good. Don was like super pro, and Ray was like, no, terrible. I don't know. Um, I didn't watch. It hooked me in with the first episode and then lost me very quick. It got boring very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought like the big problem was that everybody guessed which one was the bad guy right off the bat. Frosty it liked like, it. It was it was fun. It, it was either um, quote unquote fun or agonizing watching everybody either um, you know try to figure out or be duped by the guy. Like it, it was just like. That, I thought that's it was, what I heard anyway. I, I haven't my, watched it myself. So one of my issues with it was like there was too much going on. If it was a straightforward, like here's how um uh Saron got into power and became the king and then made the rings, like that might be interesting, like a prequel mm-hmm. of like how that all came to be. But this was like there was just too much going on and it just yeah, I don't know. And not and no characters you care about either. I just recorded an episode of the podcast with my cousin. I'm guiding him through the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. My wife's doing that with our kid, just minus the podcast part. Kassan said um, Lord of the Rings Shadow of War movie would be F, would F and Rock. Would it, though? I mean, it's a video game. Like, video game shows and movies don't usually do well. Um, yeah, and, and again, like, how much do you want to add onto this that doesn't come from Tolkien himself? If you're like, David Zasloff, lots. Eh, um, true. Drew true. said Marvel makes Disney like a billion dollars profit every year from four movies. What was the last Potter movie that had two in the last ten years? We had two in the last ten years. Right. Well, uh, they had the fan and the fan. I think we had three Fantastic Beast movies, but nobody likes them. Oh, now Dave's having problems. Sorry, my back, my battery's dying dude so, this is like technical technical issues here I, I know i'm the only one who's not but i i made sure of that um yeah no how much like with harry potter in unless you unless you get it from the author and a lot of people are kind of iffy on her now um super iffy i mean i mean how much more like you there's only so much you can mine that for i agree you know and 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 the more you try to mine it with stuff that isn't canon, like prequels and yeah, and I mean the things, idea that any, the more you pollute it and you and you you know like how much do you want how much of Harry Potter world do you want to get rid of? Star Wars says hi. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But but th- but then there wasn't. I mean, there was. They have a rich history they can pull from. How much more can you pull from Harry Potter unless you get a good writer involved and they don't have a good writer involved? They had several good writers involved with with the extended universe for Star Wars. A they lot of did, really good ones. They I'm not arguing on that point. And I'm just saying, like, what if um what if Ms. Rowling allowed like other people to tackle her stuff? Like I'm sure there's someone that's got like a muggle story somewhere. I have heard that there are authors that do that, <laughs> that let's say, here's my world, go ahead and write something. I get I get final say on some of it, but you know, otherwise, go ahead, go to town, make a new character or something. 
<laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. I do, but that you're not thinking again. You're not thinking about like David Zaslav. You don't want a new character. No, right. you want he the old character that keep... makes a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. It's hard to launch a new property. That's why we're in the situation that we're in. Yeah. Being underutilized doesn't mean it has to be good. Yeah, exactly. Oh, 100%. Um, David Zaslav don't care if it's good. Like, they don't. That's the thing is these executives make movies the way they are. And then when they become the exact things that they want them to be, they get mad because, like, why didn't you make this good? Well, right. you're an idiot. Like, yeah, I, I hate executives. They're the worst people in the world. And that's why we have to make sure they make lots of money so that they all have these horrible, these great lives and, you know, take lots of copious drugs and have massive heart attacks at 45 and die. It's a, it's a, it's exactly like pitch meeting, um, the, the pitch meeting uh, on YouTube, where they, they always go like, and then, and then India Jones comes out and the executive's like, hey, that's a guy I know, you know, and that's like, that'll make me money. And that's the whole point. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't the matter. said, uh, what video game content is the new IP form? Last right. of Us, Mario, God of War coming. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Last of Us, no, no, Last of Us is a no, huge hit. Yeah, but but like, um, look at Diablo Four, and like a few of the other titles that come out lately. Like it is literally they're just they're mining that stuff just like any IP in the movies or anything like yeah. that. That's what he said. IP farm. He's right. Right, but but that's yeah, and and it's and it's horrible. Diablo 4 sucked. It sucks. Yeah, most, I mean, that's most everything sucks. Like, right? Most movies that come out are terrible. Most TV shows are awful. Yeah. Most I books also, are bad. Like, everything sucks. I also kind of feel like um, video game IP is tough because there's an element more so to video games than there are to uh, movies and TV shows where, like, like, in between, people will fill in the stories in their head. But in the video game, you're a lot of times you're in control. You're you control what the character does, where they go, and like so when you're watching a movie and it's like I wouldn't have made that choice, you know. You, I think that's what happens with video game movies. Like why a lot of people get disappointed in them. That what you just described is a problem. There is a lot of anime out there that is based on the um, uh, on mobile games, and. The problem that you just described is the problem with the plots. Because if you're the main character, how do you make an anime where you're the main character and make the decisions? Yeah. That an anime that's actually good. And and they haven't been. They not not historically. Uh I got, I got no answers. Randy says, I know right. Like we need a boys style Harry Potter property. Call it Hufflepuffs, and it's just bad wizards in high school. <laughs> You know, if you're if you're into Harry Potter a lot, um, there is a um, there's a an anime called I think what is it called Mashal? Yeah, Mashal, Magic and Muscles, M A S H L E, Magic and uh, Magic and Muscles, Mashal. Uh, look that up. It is almost a carbon copy of Harry Potter, except the main character is One Punch Man. He has no magical power. He's just so strong that he makes everybody uh, think he has a okay. I, so, I just, uh, aside. I mean, that's just like, I mean, when you think about it, like Harry Potter launched these, um, this Academy book wave that's going on in publishing right now, where oh, yeah. like, there's a young million, adults. yeah, young adult stuff. That's Academy books. Like every kid goes to, there's always these books about this kid goes to a, a boarding school where everyone is vampires or superheroes and or I mean, nanotech monsters. Yeah. Like it's a big thing. It's a big trope. And I see like that's, and a lot of that is because of Harry Potter. Yeah. So I get, I get why them, why people are going, well, they're making money off this. We want to make money. It's ours. We own it. The problem is, like J.K. Rowling would rather sit and fight with people on Twitter all day than write a yeah. book. Oh, Adams, um, the the Adams movie. Uh, uh, I also kind of yeah, think Wednesday. That was a an academy Wednesday. thing yeah, too. Yeah, academy, right? Yeah, exactly. I also kind of feel like that's part of the problem as well. Like she's already made her money off of the books and the movies. Yep. Like she doesn't need to make any more Harry Potter. It's the people that own the rights that want to make more money off of it. But right. like, yeah, exactly. But but she made all this money so she could fight with people about. about no, she didn't make it so anything. she could fight with people. It's one of the benefits of having all this money. It allows exactly. you to fight with trans people. With trans, uh, it allows you to fight with trans people. All right, for no right. reason. Um, for no reason. So moving on. Speaking of Warner Brothers and and uh, interesting decisions, 
they have suspended their deals with J.J. Abrams and Greg Berlanti. Um, I mean, it's a lot of it is has to do with the strike, but I was kind of curious. Maybe J.D. had an insider, a little bit of an insider view on this. Like, what does it mean exactly when they suspend the contract? Is it like done, or it's just on hold until the strike is over? It depends on what they want to do with it. Yeah. It's basically we're not going to pay you to develop stuff when you're not developing anything. Yeah, Berlanti Productions sense. was in charge of Superman and Lois, by the way. But they're on strike anyway, so they're not getting. They're. It's more. Yeah. Of a, well, well, fine. We'll do this. You can't yeah. fire me. I quit. You know, it's <laughs> stupid. I can't uh, quit. You. You can't but, quit. You're fired. Right. But, but yeah, Berlanti exactly. was. Thanks. Berlanti was developing Booster Gold and Dead Boy Detectives uh, series. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. Dead Boy Detective. I mean, we and Abrams listen, we... was supposed to be working on Justice League Dark. And a Constantine reboot. Yeah, okay. yes, sure. Um, yeah, I know, right? I mean, realistically, too, those are probably draw. Those are probably backsides of the sa- of the Saffron uh, Gun regime, too. Yeah, because right? I know they want to do their own thing, and they don't want to have anything connected tangentially to the past. Which I get. You know, I just think that um, I think this is all just strike fallout. Uh, Drew says, "I hope for new mutants with houses and stuff." That was my some of my favorite comic stuff. Uh, so I think Grant Morrison's X Men from like twenty years ago was a little ahead of the curve on some of this uh, Academy yeah. stuff because he was doing that with like Quentin Choir and the Riot at Xavier's. I mean, he mm-hmm. was the last Marvel writer to really kind of hone in on the Academy aspect of Xavier's. I never thought about it like that until you just said that, but that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, it was. I think some I do th- I now don't quote me on this, but I do think there's a young adult writer that Marvel hired to do an Academy style series of books with the X Men. I don't know any more about it than that. Oh, makes I don't sense. know either. Yeah, it makes sense. I uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The problem with the New Mutants is they did a movie that like basically failed. That um, there's one fan of in the whole world, and it's me. Yes. Um, so, I mean, and I understand that was under Fox and now Disney has it all, but I think it'll be a long time before we see any new mutant stuff. There's no value in the new mutants property. Yeah. There's value in the X-Men. There's not a lot of value in the new mutants. This if, is very if true. the X-Men are done right, otherwise they'll kill it for another decade. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, am it's been four or five years now since the merger. I'm just shocked that we haven't seen anything really other than an offhanded joke in wandavision uh two anna taylor joy can use me like a chair <laughs> she's tall she's tall oh she's very tall she's, like six she's Chris, a really good actress Chris didn't hate the movie good. he's not saying he loved it but he didn't hate it either <laughs> the new mutants i thought i'm the only person who like because that was a bit on the show for a long time. Was JD yes, the only was. person oh excited about the new Mutants movie? And I'm like, when's this coming out? By the way, that's now Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot was supposed to be out a year ago, and hmm. there's nothing about it. So that movie, I think, might have gone the way of the Batgirl, and uh, it's you know a tax write off. But I really want to see it. God damn it! So. Uh, speaking of Marvel projects that will probably never see the light of day, um, I am group director Kristen Lepore said she wants to make a baby rocket show i don't know how i feel about that like watch that we saw it show yeah we saw baby rocket we saw the whole thing like it was sad and i'm good move forward not back (laughs) i climbed that magic tree yeah it's fair Uh, what she was well cast as magic too like she looks exactly like magic and that was good casting. Uh, Frosty says, true, some of the mutants sort of popped up. I don't know what they're waiting for. Me neither. Like, yeah. we have this amazingly boring-ass Kang thing going on, featuring a yeah. possibly canceled star, and now a strike. Which is uh, just brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. By the, by the way, like, am, am I crazy, or did, I, yes. did the second oh. season of Group come out? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I believe it did. I am Groot second season. How come we didn't talk about I I completely forgot about that. I did too. (laughs) Who cares? Randy, you have some good tastes, Christopher Smith says. And I would agree. (laughs) Having listened to your show, I agree, but cannot say these things publicly. 
Because you're married. Because I'm married and I'm a teacher, I lose my job and my wife. Well, well, Possibly my house. Well, we can agree that Annie Taylor Joy is probably, you know, she's 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 definitely gorgeous, but she's also done some really amazing yeah. work. I mean, she's good actress. Yeah, what, what Dude, was it? There the was witch, that one where the, the witch they... was awesome. The witch was one of the best horror movies of the last like decade. <laughs> Frost, oh, that's John. right. That's Frost right. is like the... John. John, you're not crazy. You're a sociopath. Uh, Frosty, you spelled your wrong. <laughs> yes, that's right. A little bit. The menu. She did the menu, and that was good too. Yeah, she's she's very talented. The Queen's Gambit was something everybody was in love with like a year or so ago. Oh, and she was great in that too. Yeah, yeah. she's very talented. She's very talented. She's also like six two. Yeah, Kassan said she was amazing in the menu. So. Mm-hmm. Six two. Like six three. Oh my god. Yeah. By the that end of the show, she'll be six seven. <laughs> she was in Dark Crystal. Did you hear she she's actually six ten? She was in Dark Crystal. How was that possible? I mean, we made like ten years before she was born. No, 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 no the, Age the, of Resistance, the, the series. Oh, the I series. never saw that. Was that any good? It was pretty interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I'm. It was. I don't know. Like I missed it. I watched it. It was. It was good. It was worth one watch. I don't think I'd go back again, but. It was definitely worth a watch if, you, if you're into the Dark Crystal mythology. I'm all, well, I'm always debating showing Ian. I always think of like, you know, because we do movie nights, right, with the kid. And I'm always like, oh, let's show him this. Let's show him that. And I show him a lot of 80s stuff. Like, and he loved the Never Ending Story. He yeah. cried when we watched E.T. You know, loves the Monster Squad. And the Dark Crystal, I wasn't a huge Dark Crystal fan as a kid. And I don't remember disliking it. I just don't remember actively liking it. So I've kind of not hit that one. And it makes me kind of go. I wonder if I should show him that one because I did that with Turn to Oz and went, ah, ah, I shouldn't have done this, you know. <laughs> yeah, Christmas bus is watching it on my day off. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, that was all the news I had for this week, guys. Slow news this week. Yeah, that happens when you have a strike. Yeah, I know. I know. No, no exciting news coming out. We're like, four all months right. In. We're like four months in, and these yeah. dickheads still can't get people to come to the table and fix this shit. These greedy motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Can we get this stuff on the road? Can we just pay people what they're worth and stop being a goddamn whore? According David Zasloff, to, you piece of shit. According to A1 Pictures, you can do that <laughs> if if you care about your, your you know, your fucking crap. Bob Iger. Yeah. Whatever dickhead's running Netflix that I don't know his name. You know, the funny thing is, um, in the next year, the only movies that are going to be out are the ones made by like places like A1 Productions that are, you know, paying the actors what they're worth. Mm. So that should be, you know, good for them, at least. Maybe they'll have to release all these movies that have been sitting in a that have been uh, sitting in a shelf and taking up uh, its tax write offs. Like maybe we'll see Batgirl. 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 Maybe we'll yeah, see yeah. Salem's Lot, you know? <laughs> Kassan says. I can't see because in another piece of news, it. Warner Brothers will continue to animate Justice League movies. I loved that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. They, they their animation department is you know pretty good. So. It's always been they've always had animation over Marvel, which ironically yeah. enough, Marvel Studios was launched as an animation place. Yeah. Thank Chris. you, Christopher. I will continue to preach. <laughs> what fuckers that are sitting there not not cat not not writing checks when they should be writing checks. Greedy hmm. bastards. Thanks for watching this clip from the Superhero Speak podcast. And don't forget to watch us live every Sunday night right here on this channel. While you're here, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you won't miss out on any of our great upcoming content. Speaking of content, don't forget to check out our website, SuperheroSpeak.com, where you can find the podcast, links to our social media, merch, comic reviews, and so much more. That's SuperheroSpeak.com. Thanks for watching, and don't let your cape be caught in the door. See you next time.